Welcome to Donald Moffett's exhibition titled Nature Cult. It's an exhibition that gathers works by the artists since the 1980s to the present. It, the title of the show comes from the series that you see here in my back. It's a body of work that he has been doing for the past three to five years uh, with a very uh, materic process of using resin and placing it on the surface in a way that it creates this very bodily um, experience of understanding the image that we're seeing. It's his most recent work, uh, very experimental, formal work where both it's a sculpture, it's a painting, it's a very ambivalent medium. Its name comes from the artist's interest on in creating a kind of emblem or shield, as he told me once, uh, how to create a kind of protective imagery towards processes that happen in nature. For example, one of the pieces that is pivotal to this series is the work that you see to my back. It's called Fertile Blue, and it's a work that is uh, representing, but more than representing, it's channeling the process in nature of fertility. And the artist wanted to think of how to create an artwork that may uh, be uh, a certain form of channeling that very important and very complex process that happens uh, across nature, but especially in oceans, which is what he's been mostly interested in the past years. The artist Donald Moffett is trained as a biologist, so he understands quite clear the complexity of this microcosmic um, processes that happen in nature. And uh, his sculptural painting works are his way of creating an image of that. If we go closer to understand the materiality of these works, we understand that the surfaces of these beautiful pieces are uh, quite bodily. They are very abstract, of course, but we feel a sense, a presence of a bodily figure, uh, whether it's a very uh, zoomed in uh, epidermical uh, surface, or uh, in some cases they do have a very important presence in space to an extent in which they're not only bodily, but they can also be religious. Uh, we feel a certain aura when we admire these pieces. They are somehow uh, not only sculpture and painting, but they have a certain spirituality. This work, for example, is called Ripe Blue. It references the process of ripening, which in nature is the moment in which fruits uh, are enriched with sugar. Again, this complex processes that only happen in a very microcosmic uh, scale are uh, produced in this sculptural uh, painterly imagery. This room is dedicated to his series called Felch, and they refer to his idea of the canvas as skin. They are noticeable because of the zipper component in their composition. And that very same element is what makes these canvases again uh, become bodily. In this case, the representation uh, of uh, either a torso or the under area of a human uh, body is uh, abstracted by this uh, very few elements that the artist has placed. In this case, the surfaces are not glossy. Uh, they are, on the contrary, quite uh, naked, and that nakedness is what draws our attention to them as being more related to the human skin. The artist has prepared the canvas with rabbit tail glue skin, which creates a very uh, subtle imagery on the surface where you feel as though the canvas is sweating. That uh, element plus the uh, 
possibility of opening these canvases by un unzipping them uh, creates even more uh, suggestions of the work in relation to one's desire. There are many of these works that are very playful. They are even sometimes cinematic in a sense that they produce a kind of action or they fixate a moment uh, which is again related to desire. Here the zipper seems to be a uh, in the tension about to explode and somehow that explosion or that um, very cinematic action is frozen in the way that the composition of this canvas has been made. One of the ways of entering the work of Donald Moffett is to understand his painting as misbehaved paintings. The misbehavior happens because of the way in which the body is uh, desired through these abstract compositions uh, that he has made for the past years. And in some cases, this misbehavior goes even further when the orifices that he creates on the canvas are abstractions of genitalia. Uh, they are very subtle but they indeed provoke or instigate a desire within us. This work called The Second Sacrifice is quite special in the way that it has transformed and dislocated our more normative or normalized notions of understanding painting. Painting normally has a very direct connection with the frontality of the canvas. And as we can see here, the artist Donald Moffett has inverted that relation. We see a work of art, a painting from the backside, and that backside is ripped. Its, uh, its skin is, has been displayed by this um, very openness of uh, how we encounter the work. And the idea of seeing it from the back could also be a way to relate to his form of queer art. Queer art in a sense, not because it represents queer identity, but there is a queerness of looking at things from a non-normative way, a non-frontality way. The work, as you can see, has a lot of uh, very gentle and detailed um, elements. In this case, the stitching around the orifice creates another layer of um, bodily representation. The uh, surface becomes epidermical, and it is precisely that stitching which uh, gives us uh, even a uh, more uh, intense desire towards the image that he has abstracted. We've dedicated this room to perhaps Donald Moffett's most iconic work to date. It's his 1987 He Kills Me wallpaper, originally made as a street a art piece in 1987 in the height of the AIDS crisis. In that time in New York, the gay community was hardly hit because of the virus but mostly because of the inaction of the Reagan administration. Hence why the uh, president of the US, it's his portrait, which you see here, is uh, the iconic emblem of the piece, but of that specific moment in time in New York when the gay community suffered for uh, the inaction of the government. It took four years for the Reagan administration to even use the word AIDS in any public forum uh, during that time, which shows you the level of structural homophobia and inaction that happened uh, at the time to try to control the AIDS epidemic. The Reagan administration uh, is responsible for the many deaths, especially the, towards the gay community 
that was uh, violently affected by uh, the inaction of this government. The work uh, is presented nowadays more with, uh, within context of museums and galleries uh, and not on street or uh, protest like it was originally. And when the artist uh, shows this work in the past uh, years, he normally also juxtaposes it with a uh, body of work that he later did in the end of the 1990s, which are photographs of the sky, the very bright blue sky of New York from his studio, which uh, for him are a sign of optimism after the so many gray years of the Reagan eight time. Uh, it is a juxtaposition that uh, works very well and gives a certain kind of hope uh, towards what was indeed a very critical moment. Since uh, this work was shown originally in context of protests and as street art, for this exhibition, we've also included a selection of archival images that present the context of uh, gay activism that happened during that time in which this imagery and this specific work literally appeared on the streets, uh, which you can see uh, here through some images that are showing protests of the ACT UP gay activist group. For this show, we've juxtaposed the iconic installation, He Kills Me, with this very small, but very naughty and elegant at the same time works that Donald uh, did around 2003, 2004. It's the first time where the artist used the resin material, which we saw at the beginning in his Nature Cult series. In this case, the works uh, have this naughtiness and this misbehaved painting where we feel the human body and the desire of the audience towards the surfaces because of this uh, formless orifices that are in the composition of these works. They have been installed at a certain lower height than normal eye level, which suggests a, a voyeurism towards trying to see what's inside these paintings. And they are not only uh, flat and glossy, in some cases uh, they have this um, yeah, texture that creates even more luscious ideas of desire. This is a real treat to Hong Kong, and we're very happy that this show uh, will be seen by friends and audiences in Taiwan. Please go online to the gallery's website to get more information 